Now we're moving on to series. We're going to talk about partial sums for a sequence. This is lesson 14.1c. And if you haven't seen 14.1a or b, you could get lost or confused. I don't want that to happen to you, so there's links in this description to watch those before watching this one. So here's a couple of things we need to know first. Infinite means it goes on forever. A lot of you know that. Finite means there's a limited amount. It's limited to a certain amount. It's finite, okay? My piggy bank holds a finite number of coins before it's full. A sequence is an ordered set of numbers and the nth term is any number we want in a sequence. So we write an n for the subscript a sub n, okay? All right, so a partial sum is the sum of a specified number of terms of a sequence. We can add the terms of a sequence. We have a series. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and the nth term would be 2 times n minus 1. For this sequence, we have the series 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus, we have an ellipses for so on, and then we would add the 2 times n minus 1, and then we would add the next number. This is the formal definition of a series. It's an indicated sum, s sub n, of the terms of an in infinite sequence. So here we have a sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, sub 4, a sub n. That's called a series. We would write an s with a little n subscript, and it equals these when they're added together. See? We get a sum because many sequences are infinite, they go on forever, it's often easier to consider the sum of only a finite, a limited number of terms of a sequence. When we do this, it's called a partial sum. And we can construct some partial sums for 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and the nth term, 2 times n minus 1. For s sub 1, we would find the first term of the sequence. That's a 1. It's a sub 1. For s sub 2, we would find the sum of the first two terms. So we have 1 and a 3. That's 1 plus 3. That's a 4. This is easy, isn't it? For this one, see the little subscript 4? That means we're going to find the first four terms, the sum. So we add 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. That gives us a 16. We can find s sub 5 for this sequence. Notice that we have positives and negatives mixed together, so we have to be careful when we're adding them. So that means we're going to find the sum of the first five terms. There's a little subscript 5 here. So we're going to add the first five terms. We have a negative 2, a 4, a negative 6, an 8, and a negative 10. We can add the negatives together and get a negative 18. We can add the positives together and get a positive 12. Then we can add them and get a negative 6. And that's the sum of the first five terms. We can also find the sum of the first three terms. It tells us there's a little 3 here. So we're going to do the first three terms, which are negative 2, 4, and negative 6. We can add the negatives together and get a negative 8. We add the positive 4, we get a negative 4. See? We can find s sub 1, s sub 2, s sub 3 for this sequence. We have fractions. Do you notice what they're doing? They're being divided by 2 each time as they go on. So you know what the next one would be, right? 1 64th. But let's find these. This is telling us it just wants the first one, so we have a sub 1. That's a half, okay? It wants the sum of the first two, so we have a fourth and a half added together. Like denominators, we get two-fourths plus one-fourth. We get three-fourths. For the first three terms, that's one-fourth, one-half, one-eighth, okay? doesn't matter what order we add them in. We get common denominators, and we get a seven-eighths. All right, so that would be the first, that would be the first and second added together, and that would be the first, second, and third term added together, see? 
So that was pretty easy, wasn't it? That wasn't that hard. Our next lesson is going to continue on for 14.1. We've done A, B, and C. Next one is sigma notation. That's 14.1D. We're going to talk about using the Greek letter sigma. That's it right there. We use it to simplify notation when a series has a formula for the general term. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing well. I hope, I hope what I do helps you out. If it does, hit the like button. It lets me know that we're making some headway here. And I'll see you next time, and we'll talk about that Greek letter sigma. Bye.